Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. This video will be the second part of our new tutorial series where we'll show you how to make architectural representations with SketchUp to Illustrator workflow, step by step. In this tutorial, we'll prepare this rather scenic elevation. In elevation drawings, we usually only see facades, but they become much more meaningful when represented within the surrounding environment, as in street sections. We downloaded this model from 3D Warehouse. The trees came with the model. Since we will add our own trees in Illustrator, we'll right-click and hide them. If you want to download the model and follow the tutorial, the link is in the description box below. We'll export two separate PDFs, one for the building and one for the environment. First, we hide our coffee shop and export to D. Go to File, Export, and select to D Graphic. It has a PDF options window, but we'll leave it as it is. Click export and your first PDF file will be ready. Then you can unhide the building from the edit menu. Now, we'll hide the environment, but we'll leave the ground level to easily overlap to PDFs later. Again to export, go to file, export, and select to D-graphic. Finally, we will export the shadows to add to our drawing. For this, we need Shadows Toolbar. Go ahead and right-click your toolbar and select Customize Toolbar. From there, choose Shadows Tools. Then you can drag and drop them to your toolbar. To add shadows, click on the shadow symbol. Then you can play with the sliders until you find an angle you like. Once you OK with the shadows, to export shadows only, you'll need to go to View, Edge Style, and uncheck Edges. Go to View again, this time uncheck the profiles. To export the shadows again, go to File, Export, select to D-Graphic. We'll export as PNG. Go to PNG Options and make sure to check the transparent background. That's all we're going to do in SketchUp. Now we can move on to Illustrator to make the drawing. Right-click to PDFs to open them in Illustrator. We will need two layers for two PDFs. Add new layers and rename them. You can drag and drop the other PDF into the workspace. Don't forget to save your work as an Illustrator file. Now, you can start by adjusting the artboard size, we'll go with 60 by 40 centimeters. Select all the background layer by simply clicking the circle in the right, then go to strokes panel and choose round cap and round join options, this way, your lines will look much smoother. You can also adjust the stroke color to your liking, we'll go with a soft gray, since it's the background layer. Since we exported this drawing from a 3D model, there may be overlapping lines or lines that do not fully fit, we'll clean them quickly. We have these excess parts outside the artboard, to split them, draw a rectangle same size as the edges. Select the rectangle and lines, then click the Shape Builder tool from the toolbar, to split the lines, click on them while pressing the Alt key. Then you can select and delete them. Then we select and group the ground line, which makes selection easier. To emphasize the ground level, we darken its color and increase the stroke thickness. You can use the Live Paint Bucket tool to fill in the background outlines. To use the Live Paint, first, you need to select all and group them. Then you can go to Object, Live Paint Make, your Live Paint group is ready. We'll select the tool from the toolbar, and for coloring, we'll just go with white. To color every surface in a group, you'll need to click the group three times. It's that easy. You have your outlines and fills. Now we can place our building in this background, leave some parts of the ground line to easily overlap the two drawings. And always remember to work with groups. 
We will define the contours of our building as we did with ground line. Our building still only consists of outlines. Let's add surfaces again using the Live Paint Bucket tool. Select All, go to Object, Live Paint Mate. Then again, select the tool from Toolbar, then click on the drawing three times. Now that we have placed our building, we can continue working on the background layer. We will add a grayscale sky. To do that, we will draw three soft gray-toned rectangles that gradually become lighter. To copy, you can select and drag the rectangles while holding the Alt key. You can accentuate the sky by adding cloud vectors. And adding flying birds into the sky will bring your scene to life. We have prepared a package of all the vectors we used in this drawing. The link is in the description box below. You can easily customize the vectors to suit your scene. To give more depth to the sky, you can add a dotted or grainy pattern. Make sure to lower its opacity though, you don't want the sky to overpower the composition. We'll add a new layer for the street fillers. As we mentioned before, we will add our own trees to the scene. Having a library of various vectors makes your work much easier while preparing representations. Be careful not to disturb the depth perception of the scene when placing vectors. You can scale the vector characters with reference to the environment. We added surfaces to the entire building with live paint, now we need to delete the transparent areas. There was furniture in our coffee shop model, we are adding the missing objects such as potted plants and parasols. Be sure to adjust the stroke weight and colors. Adding stray animals will cheer up your scene. Always use the Shape Builder tool when you need to delete excess parts of objects. Select the object and the surface, and click on the excess parts while holding the Alt key. We filled the street. Now let's fill the interior. Again, Use the Shape Builder tool to delete the excess parts. It is apparently the rush hour in our coffee shop. You can easily convert the vectors in your library to the style you want by simply changing their fill and stroke colors. Usually we don't see sections and elevation drawings, but this is our drawing, and we can represent our project in the way we want. We're going to cut a section from the river where we've separated by a line. The bottom part will be underwater. To differentiate the section from elevation, you can use patterns. Likewise, we'll add pattern to the retaining wall. A brick pattern would work fine. You can adjust a pattern's properties with the Edit Pattern button located in the Swatches panel. From there, you can change the pattern's scale, color, line weight, and so on. When you have done, click Done. You can color the surfaces and add patterns so they don't look white and empty.
We add our last layer for the river part and place it at the top. Now we'll fill our river with vectors as we do in the street part, don't be afraid to add details. Nature isn't sterile anyway. You can duplicate and customize as you go. Now the fun part, we'll scatter our river creature elevations to the underwater section. We draw lines with the pencil tool to give a ripple effect. Finally, you can use wild plant vectors to both fill the background and frame your scene. Remember we exported shadows from our model at the beginning of the video? It's time to add it. We export it as PNG. We'll drag and drop it into the building group and place it on top of the coffee shop. Then we can show you how to change its opacity settings. Click Opacity. There you'll see different blend mode options. Hue will work great for this one. It will send the shadow to the back. This way our vectors pop. Our scene is done. Selecting the artboards while exporting is enough to prevent these excess parts to be in your drawing. But we will make a clipping mask nonetheless to make it look clean for the video. We'll draw a rectangle on top. Align it to the artboard with the align tools. Select all and click make clipping mask. Our scene is ready to export. We'll also prepare a quick Instagram post layout for this landscape format drawing. Go ahead and export your drawing as JPEG. Then add a new artboard from the Edit Artboards panel. Its size will be 40 by 40. Now you can drag and drop your JPEG export to the workspace. Scale and align it to the artboard with the Align tools. It needs a frame. We'll draw a rectangle and that's it. We hope you liked our elevation tutorial. We will continue this series with new architectural representations. Is there any representation style would you like us to try? Feel free to share it with us in the comments. Until next time.